to Tinkering with Gaver. I'm Gaver. And today we have a very special show. We are going to get to visit the magical workshop of the amazing artist Aaron Kramer, who is going to take us on a tour and show us all of the circles that he can find in his workshop. And I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you. He's one of my favorite people, and he has an amazing, amazing workshop. Let's check it out together. Hi there. I'm Aaron Kramer. I'm a friend of Gaver's. Uh, he asked me if I could maybe stop by and give you a little tour of my shop and then talk a little bit about circles. I love circles. Circles are everywhere in my life. I use them quite a bit in my work. I'm an artist. I make stuff out of stuff, all kinds of found objects and recycled things. And I thought I'd give you a little tour around my shop and then maybe we'll talk about some circles. But let's, let's kind of look at this as like a scavenger hunt. We're going to look around the shop and we're going to see if we can find things with circles in them. I mean, even if you look just over my shoulder, you see some circles right back there. That's a handle for, for something. Circles make great handles because they allow you to get a lot of leverage on something. It's a big, actually, a circle is or can be a giant lever. A very simple machine, but it's a, it can be a lever. So let me flip the camera around here and I'll show you some stuff. Ooh. All right, so here we have, uh, you know, let, me, let me focus in on this workbench here. There's all kinds of stuff on here. Uh, let's see, so there's, you see this, uh, this globe over here. Globe is a, is a circle. Uh, globes and spheres can be circles. So yeah, this, this object here, which is pretty, pretty cool. This is actually the planet Titan. Uh, is a project I'm doing for a client. This is a prototype for a stand and it's got a circle on it too. And that would sit on there kind of like that. Uh, let's see, there's, uh, there's uh, I see some circles here. There's a circle here on these great little containers uh, that hold uh, small nuts and bolts and things. Uh, there's circles on that. Let's see what's inside of here. Let's see. Oh, well, that's, that's definitely a circle. That is a a miniature compass. Yeah, there's a whole bin of those over there. There's circles on things like jars. You can lid on that. Definitely a circle. Circles here. Circles everywhere you look. Let's see. Uh, let's, let's kind of pan over here. Take a look and see if we see any other circles. Well, there's uh, definitely some circles over here. There's a... Uh, let's see. There's this object over here, which is a kind of a vintage uh, game of sorts. There's a big circle in the center of that. Uh, there's circles in these spheres here too. These spheres have a series of hoops, which is a circle. A hoop is a circle. So is a uh, toilet paper tube. Here I was making one into a into an alligator. Definitely a circle. A little dish is a circle. Washers. Definitely circles. Let's see. Circles everywhere. Circles on the ends of things to receive things. Circles, uh, parts of tubes. Little plugs of steel. Definitely a circle. Hi. Uh, so I'm going to take this piece of wire. This wire is. Uh, I think maybe about uh, 20 inches or so long. I can well, put a tape measure on that and see. But this machine uses these three rollers to be able to make a hoop. So there's, these are the wire grooves here. And this you place the wire in here. I'm going to adjust the back, uh, the back roller here a little bit to allow it to go through. But you'll see in a second that as I crank on this, move that water bottle out of the way, it's going through and the back roller is resisting it and it is out of that. Now I can increase this position here and I can make a bigger ring. So look at that. That tool makes circles. Kind of cool. This is another type of ring roller here next to it. This is another one. This one's for a little heavier gauge wire than that. But let's see if we look over here, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of go mobile here. Okay, here we go. So, hey, look at that. See the circles on that? Definitely. A saw blade is a circle. Let's see if we see any circles over here. I definitely see a few 
few of them. Old Chinese checkers board. Look for the circles. I see a few. There's some more saw blades. Definitely circles. This is my big band saw. And that definitely has a circle. Circles. So circles can also be if the ends of uh, things that are rods too. So uh, let's see, for example, well, if, you were to, if I were to cut this piece of rebar in half, you would see on the end profile of it, it's a circle. There's another piece of steel that is a circle. Here's a little Lazy Susan I have on my welding bench. It allows me to be able to mount things on here and weld around them. Definitely a circle. There's some big spheres back here. Definitely circles. Grinder, circle. Let's go take a look. Over. Oh, there's a circle right there. Let's go over here and take a look at some other stuff. So let's see. There's some of my art here. This is definitely a circle. That's all woven out of recycled street sweeper bristles. Pretty cool, eh? This is a whole machine that I turn this handle here, and then this thing moves over here, and then that one's out of there. Well, sometimes these circles, which are uh, gears, for part of a little differential in here. You see that little differential? Circle and circle. This circle turns in this way. This one turns this way, so it turns the rotation from this direction into the rotation into that direction. That's kind of cool. All kinds of stuff. You hear the ocean? There's actually little ball bearings on the inside of there. They're making noise that sounds like an ocean. Now here's some circles here. There's a crazy little circle there. What's that look like to you? Some people dancing, right? That's a circle, circle here. Let's see what happens when we turn this circular motion, turning this way. This is also a type of differential. Well, that's kind of fun, isn't it? And then there's hidden circles and things. A crank, crank arm is actually a circle too. You see how it describes the shape of a circle? This one's turning an internal crankshaft and then making this bird's head nod like that. That's kind of cool. Well, let's see what this is back here. Definitely a lot of circles on that. What do you guys think that's made out of? You're right, tin can lids. Kind of cool. Well, here's an old piece of art that I made back in the 90s. This is a painted box, also a circle. Got cool eyes on that side. And then on this side, there is a game where you have to try to get the balls which are circles into the little spots like that. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, there's a circle right there. That's kind of cool. Let's see. Over here, definitely a lot of circles going on in here. All these old toys. These are tin toy tops. Even this little, this little baby top. Circles are nice because they can balance themselves pretty well too. around the center of a circle. It balances really, really well. There's all kinds of circles. Circles on that. Circles on that. The symbols in the monkey is circular eyes. Those are some funny circles right there. Let's see. Oh, I see some circles up there. Top of that. Circles back there. Those are forms for making some giant hoops. Circles in there. What do you think? Is the button a circle? Sure is. There's all kinds of circles in here. There's some old, old machines that I made. This one. Turn this and these things all move. Kind of hard to do one handed. But definitely a circle in a can. Let's see, it's kind of a lumpy circle. 
this light fixture. What do you think? Circle. Huh. Let's see. What else do we have over here? Well, here, I have an idea. Let's let me mount the camera back here again. So we were talking before about how uh, Gaver the other day uh, was showing you guys how to make a compass, a real simple kind of compass in order to make a circle. So that's great because it, it gives you a center point for the circle and you can, uh, you can determine your radius from that. But what if you have a circle already, like this kind of circle, and you want to find the center of that circle? So that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, thing like okay well what if I wanted to have a series of discs and I'm going to stack them up and I was going to make maybe make a pulley or something out of it but I really need to find the center so a couple quick ways to find the center of a circle one you can guess guessing is just fine so I'm going to guess and I can I can know that I'm in the center if I can balance it on my finger and uh, then I know I'm, I'm pretty darn close to the center if I'm anywhere but the center you see it's going to fall off my finger that's that's based on this being a uh, uh, the, the, an, an even circle. So that's one way I can guess where that is and I could also decide, okay, I'm gonna you know, point a spot out and guess that. But what if I had a circle on a piece of paper here and I wanted to find where the center of that circle is? So once again, I could guess. I could say mm, maybe it's gonna be there. And as we were, were talking about with Gabriel the other day, if you measure and I could do this with a ruler, but I'm going to do it with just a, a piece of edge of a piece of paper. I'm going to measure there and then see if this is equal. And you can see there's there's a difference between those two. So I am not in the center of that. Now I could kind of go on and I could I could I could say, OK, well, half of that distance would be about there. And then I could I could make a new mark over here and I could see if that's closer and I can get pretty close that way. Also, that's one way to find it. But here's a here's a, a relatively simple way to determine the center of a circle. So I'm going to take a straight edge and I'm going to strike a line from edge to edge on the circle. That line there is called a chord. Chord is on the, touching the edges of a circle. Uh, I made a, a line. Now I need to find the center of that, that, um, that chord. And I could measure it with a ruler. Uh, but I like to do things without rulers sometimes, and I'm going to show you a way we can do it without a ruler. So I'm going to take the edge of the piece of paper. I'm going to line it up over there, take a pencil. I'm going to make a mark where, uh, for my length of my cord. If I take that piece of paper and I fold it in half like that, that is a, the center of that line. And I'm going to make a mark over here. Now I want to go perpendicular to that. So perpendicular means 90 degrees. I'm going to use my funny pencil compass here. 90 degrees to that. So I'm going to, in order to determine 90, I'm going to lay this on here like that. And I'm going to draw a line along the edge of uh, my paper. Nice light line. All right. So now I'm going to choose any other spot on, uh, on this. And I'm going to draw another chord. It doesn't have to be exact exactly cross and then the length of the line really doesn't matter because I'm going to find the center of this line too. So I'm going to make another line there and the same way I'm going to find the center of that by making a mark there. Fold that in half again and that will determine where the center of this line is. The reflection's a little tough there, but there we go. So now I need to make another perpendicular line to that. And where these two lines intersect is going to be the center of my circle. So that right there is the center of my circle. Now another way to do it using a compass would be to uh, to take a point anywhere along our circle. I'm going to place my uh, the pointy bit on, on there and I'm going to make a mark over here and I make a mark through my, my, my circle. And then I'm going to take that same spot there and I'm going to make a mark there. I'm going to go back to this original spot here and make a mark there. Now that mark plus one over here And one over here. Now if I join these two points together, 
using my straight edge here, piece of brass I just had a line around. I'm going to draw a line between those. All right. And then in the same way, I needed to get two points of reference. But already you can see that went right through that center point that I thought was the center before. So I'm going to use uh, my, uh, my compass also again. I'm going to choose another point anywhere along here. I'm going to make a mark up here, make a mark down here. Make sure I get those accurate. And where I go through the, through the circle over here, I'm going to make a mark and do the same thing over here. Whoops. See, it looks like looks like I've done something wrong. What did I do wrong? Well, let's see. All right, so I have my point over here, point over here. Let me go back through my circle again, so that intersects my circle right there. I'm over here, make my mark there. Over here, I made my mark there. Ah, okay, I see. All right, make my mark there. So between these two lines here, I'm going to draw a straight line or between these two intersections here. Draw a straight line. I'm going to use this here like that. And so where these two intersect should be the center of my circle. So they're off by maybe a millimeter or two, but that should be the center of my circle. Now, if my compass were a little less wiggly and I actually really measured it with some 90 degree triangles we could have gotten much closer but that is a way to find the center of the circle so if i cut that out and i put a hole in there and i spin it it should be spinning perfectly on that center axis that's how you find the center of a circle lovely hanging out with you guys bye wow i loved getting a chance to look around in his workshop uh, I just want to go back there and open all the boxes and drawers and see what's in them. And uh, what are those beautiful, crazy contraptions that uh, he's been working on? Uh, I have here another little postcard from Captain Banana. Hey Gamer, Captain Banana here, and I have a couple of jokes for you today from the Banana Castle. Why didn't the teddy bear have dessert? Because it was already stuffed. What do you get when you cross a vampire with a snowman? Frostbite. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you next time. <laughs> okay, uh, more bad jokes, uh, which is just what we need. Thank you, Captain Banana. Thank you, Aaron, for sharing your workshop and your art with us as ever. Inspirational. Beautiful things, magical movements, just fantastic. And uh, what a cool trick with circles to find the center. Take care of each other. Be nice to yourself. Remember that the biggest playground you'll ever find is right up here in your imagination. Always room to run and play whenever you need to. Thank you all for watching. Looks like this is the end. <laughs>